Have you often found yourself creating getters and setters for your POJO fields, creating constructors, writing code to close resources after use, etc. This is where Project Lombok comes to the rescue, significantly reducing boilerplate code and reducing clutter. In this video, we will see how to install Lombok to our IDE so that it can support it. Next, we will see a typical POJO and the amount of boilerplate code you would generally need to create in terms of getters and setters etc. Then we will get rid of the boilerplate code and see how Lombok makes our code clutter free. We will talk about various features of Lombok like generating getters and setters, no args constructor, all arguments constructor, required arguments constructor, two string equals and hash code implementations and cleanup feature. First, let's google Project Lombok and click on this link to go to its website. So Project Lombok is a Java library that automatically plugs into your editor and build tools spicing up your Java. Never write another getter or equals method again. With one annotation, your class has a fully featured builder. Automate your logging variables and much more. Let's click on features, stable and here we see a list of the various features it supports and we are going to talk about a lot of them. Let us click on download and download version 1.18.10. It downloads lombok.jar. Let us see how to install it on Eclipse or in my case Spring Tool Suite which is a flavor of Eclipse. Let's go to the downloads folder. Click on the lombok.jar file. On my Ubuntu Linux I get a message that it is not marked as executable. Let's right click, go to properties, go to permissions and check the execute box. Now when you click it, it will automatically try to find the IDE installations on your machine. In my case it is not able to, but it allows me to specify the location. Let me go to the folder location of Spring Tool Suite and choose the Spring Tool Suite.ini file and say install and it's done. Going back to our Spring Tool Suite folder, we see the lombok.jar file copied here and if you open the INI file, we see a reference to it over here. You would need to exit and start Spring Tool Suite again for the IDE to recognize it. Let's click on File, New, Project. Let me choose the Maven project as I would like Maven to download the lombok dependency for me. But in a non-Maven project, you can point your project to the lombok.jar to include it in the library. Let's click next. Choose the default option. Give a group ID, artifact ID and click finish. Now here is our project. Let's go to the packages and open app.java, a simple file with a main method. Now right click on the package and choose new class and call it books to represent our POJO. Let's add a few private properties like ID, name, author and price. Typically at this point, you will create a no args constructor. Let's right click, choose source and then generate constructor using fields. Click generate. You can right click, choose source and then generate getters and setters. Choose all fields and then click generate. Right click, choose source and then generate two string method. Click generate. Right click, choose source and then generate hash code and equals method. So all this is boilerplate code you typically need with the POJO. The IDE helps generate it but now you have 75 plus lines of code when you only needed these few lines to indicate properties. Now first let's go to our app.java class. Let me declare a new books variable b and initialize it with the empty books constructor. Using the set methods let me set the properties for author1, book1, id1 and price of $20. Using system out, let me print book1 details. Over here, the two string method on the books object will be used. Let me create a second instance of the books object using the all argument constructor for book2, author2. Using system out, let us see if book b is the same as b1 using the equals method and these should not be equal. Let us create another instance of the books object which is the same as the one for book one 
with author 1, book 1, ID 1 and price of $20. Using system out, let us see if book B is the same as book B3. Now, let us run our class as a Java application. We see our book details for the book object B using the toString method. Using equals method, we confirm book B is not the same as book 2 but is the same as book B3. Okay, now let us get to the fun stuff of seeing Lombok in play to reduce the code clutter. So we want to get rid of this boilerplate. Obviously, our app.java class will now complain. First, let's open our pom.xml file and add the Lombok dependency. Let's go to the project Lombok website. Under install is how you can install it on various IDEs and build tools. Let's click Maven, copy the dependency, paste it in our project. Let's right click on the project, choose Maven and then update project. Let us go to the books.java class, put in the annotation add getters to generate getters for our properties. Let's import it from Lombok. Similarly, let us put the add setters annotation to generate the set methods for our properties. Let's import it too. Now, if we see the outline, we see that these annotations have generated the getters and setters for us. Going to app.java now, we see our getters and setters are being resolved. Let us get the constructors fixed now. Going back to the books.java, let's add the annotation no arcs constructor to generate a no arcs constructor. The annotation all args constructor will generate an all arguments constructor. Import these. Going back to the app.java, everything is resolved now. Let's run the app now. Since we do not have a two string implementation, we see the object address here. Also, without the equals method, we do not see the correct comparison result for book B and B3. Lombok helps us with these two. Going back to the books.java class, let's add the two string and equals and hash code annotations to generate these. Import them. Now, if we click the outline, we see all these methods being generated by Lombok. Go back to app.java and run the class again. We see the two string implementation and the equals method giving correct results. And look how compact our class is. Lombok also gives us the non-null annotation to make fields required. Add it to a couple of fields and with the required args constructor, it can generate a constructor for the required fields for us. And here it is in the outline. Pretty cool. Going to the app.java, if we try to construct a box, it does not allow us to construct the object without specifying all required fields. Nice. Let's move the no args and all arguments constructor down. Lombok helps make our code even more compact. The getter, setter, required args constructor, to string, and equals and hash code annotations can be replaced by a single annotation data. Let us import it. Let's go back to our app.java class, run it, and we see the same results. Let us also look at the builder annotation, which produces complex build APIs for our class. Let's import it. So with the add builder annotation, we can now create an instance of the books class as books.builder and then specify and chain each property like id, author, name, price and then call the build method. Let's print this object. Run the class and we see it was constructed properly. I also wanted to mention to you that you can place the getter and setter annotations at the field level too and that will take precedence to the class level declaration. For instance, if I do not want to generate a setter for the id field I can put a setter at the id level and put access level as none. Now our app.java cannot find the setter for the id field. Let's remove it. Finally, I wanted to demonstrate the add cleanup annotation which will close the annotated resource automatically for us. So here it will close the file input stream for you. As you would notice there is no close method called on it. So you can put this annotation against the variables you want Lombok to take care of closing for you. Let's run the class and we see the results. In this video, we saw how to install Lombok on our Spring Tool Suite IDE. Then, using a simple POJO, we learned about the various convenient annotations of Lombok like getters, setters, no args constructor, all args constructor, to string, equals and hash code, non-null, required args constructor, data, 
and clean up annotations. All these annotations help reduce boilerplate code for our classes, keeping them compact and easy to maintain. Thanks for watching.